Okay, well, just to make sure that you don't think I'm a super purist that only wants to play Baroque music on a Baroque trumpet or a trumpet de catch or whatever, I like very much the piccolo trumpet. It's a piccolo trumpet. It's a small trumpet. And this happens to be one that I built for and developed for Zygmunt Council in California, which the company doesn't exist anymore. Zig died and his sons didn't continue the, the, the factory. Um, maybe it wasn't viable. I don't know. Nice people, but life goes on. This is a piccolo trumpet that was given to me like the flugelhorn, like the trumpet in the Frankfurt Messe. He gave, he gave me seven instruments and wanted me to represent him in Europe for his instruments. I said, I've got some wonderful instruments from Schilke. I really want uh, to play your instruments. He said, well, how are we going to do this? I said, I'm interested in research and development. So I took his piccolo trumpet home and I developed one that has three different bells, three different lead pipes, three different sets of slides. And I had my wonderful instrument maker, Mr. Heinz Pogensee in Leinach, make triggers, especially for the first valve, that don't bind. It doesn't bind because it has a, a, like a rail here that moves along. It's wonderfully, beautifully sensitive and very easily, and doesn't bind. And you can pull the slides and move the slides. So it has bells, including a wooden bell for B flat. And it has also a wooden bell for A and a G bell and whatever. But in any event, a wonderful piece to demonstrate this instrument and the piccolo trumpet is a piece from Gottfried Heinrich Stotzel. And I've asked my young friend and colleague, Mr. Mike Breutigam, to come and do this with me. He's holding actually also an instrument made by Canstel, yeah, probably in the 90s. It's a high E-flat trumpet in long form. I have an, another version of that, but uh, I can show you in another YouTube what that's about. Maybe play Haydn Concerto on it and whatever. But, uh, since he's playing the second part and it's down a third, sometimes down a fifth, it's better to use a larger instrument. The same concept that I was trying to talk about with trumpet de catches. It's better to have a larger mouthpiece and a larger instrument in a larger tessitura or a larger range. So Mike was very kind to have rehearsed this a little bit with me. And since he's going to play with me in July for Danny's wedding, I thought it would be a great opportunity for him to be a part of this YouTube, and I thank you very much for coming along. Um, you're welcome. You're, thank you very much. So, we're going to do, uh, uh, if you can do just a short introduction before letter B, it starts with the second trumpet, or the, the what's not a second, trumpet two, or the trumpet B, trumpet A, I don't think about first and second, uh, at letter B. So before letter B? Yeah, three bars. Yeah, three bars would be great. So we're both a little bit nervous. I just came in a bar too early, and that gives me an opportunity to make a break and ask Mike, would you like to try the beginning again? Yes. Again, okay, please. great. So uh, what what are the first notes that you're playing there? We want to make, make um, it some... I played A and D. A and D. Okay, it was the D that cracked, right? Yes. It's the, may I suggest you take one and three as a combination of valves, go into the, go into the sixth overtone series, use a little bit of tr third valve sliding uh, uh, extension. Why don't you just try that A and D and see if you can get that interval? Because you're hearing what he's doing. The reason he cracked the note is because he's hearing an interval that the instrument won't produce for him. It's not that he doesn't play the trumpet well. It's because the instrument won't resonate what he wanted to hear. So A and D. Now you're playing the A third valve slide because, but you could use it one and two and put a little first valve slide and that could be the slide that you also need for the D. So you just set the first valve slide for the A and the D and use one and two and one and three. Can you try that? See, it works like a door. See, it works like a doorstop. Just pull out a little bit first valve slide. See, the first valve tuning slide, on a, even on a piccolo trumpet, is the most important slide because you, most of the combinations, even one and three, you can use a one, two, and three. You can always use the first valve slide to extend them. 
It just extends the ex uh, complete length of the instrument. You want to try that just one more time to be more secure about it? First valve slide a little extended, A. Sounds great to me. Are we ready? Danny. Super, super, very good. You know, I've played this piece many times with different trumpet players from England, from France, from the United States, from Germany. Connie Grote, solo trumpet in the Berlin Philharmonic. Fred Mills from the Canadian Brass Quintet. Uh, Michael Laird from uh, Philip Jones Brass Ensemble. And I think it sounds great on the E-flat trumpet. And believe me, you played it wonderfully. They didn't play it a bit better, believe me, because it's difficult. Of course, we might want to just try letter G a little bit more. Let's try letter G and a little bit more expressively. Uh, I'm a little bit too loud, I think. I'd like to play a little bit less loud. Can we try G? Just two bars before letter G. It's not the intricate running here. Just letter G, maybe to, to I. Okay? Play an introduction, please. How many bars? Uh, two bars. Two bars, okay. Super. The reason I wanted to make the point about you playing it very well and comparing it to really top-notch instrumental performers internationally is because it's very important to appreciate your colleagues. It's very important to give them a sense of respect and appreciation for their abilities. And I know that since our rehearsal yesterday, Friday, you practiced this, didn't you? You, yesterday, you looked at it, didn't you? Yeah. Yes, of course, because it has to be. The person that doesn't practice his part is jeopardizing the quality of the whole ensemble. It's very important to do your homework because it makes life a lot easier. And since we're very pressed for time, we can go on. 
and play the, the second movement, which I think is the most beautiful part of this, where the two instruments are, are in, in a, a dialogue with a lot of expression. And, um, well, without ado, uh, uh, up phrase here, please. And you might use a little bit of pedal as you want. 